This is one of the many questions that will help us see how complex numbers help us get results and uh, conclusions that actually just affect the world of real numbers. So let's dive in and have a look. It starts by saying, uh, let z equal cos theta plus i sine theta. So right from the outset, we can see that z uh, is a series of complex numbers. Um, it, you know, theta can take on different values, but it's not just any random complex numbers. We would normally write a complex number in polar form as r cos theta plus i sine theta. And the fact that you can see there's no r that's visible here means that r must equal to 1 in order for z to equal that. So if r, the modulus, equals 1, that means that z must be a complex number on the unit circle. Uh, and the unit circle is a lovely and important shape which has lots of really great and useful properties which will allow us to prove this result that we're about to see. So. How do we then move forward to use this result um, to do parts A, B, and C in sequence? Well, you can see part A says use De Marvis theorem to show this. Now, this result here I've actually proved a number of times in class um, and on previous questions, so I'm not going to do it in long form. You can see I've got it uh, pre-written and hidden here, um, but this question wouldn't make sense um, if I don't show it to you at least briefly. So let's walk through what this result is. What I can say is, by De Marvis' theorem, by definition, um, we get this result here. You can see that um, z to the power of n has the same effect as just multiplying whatever our z was. We defined it as cos theta plus i sine theta, and taking the arguments, multiplying them by n. Um, and you can see there's a parallel here when I raise to the power of negative n. De Marvis' theorem works for any integer value of n, even negative numbers. So therefore, you can see um, this is that multiplication of the arguments, but I'm multiplying by negative n instead of n. Now, the reason why this is useful to us is because once we put z to the n and z to the negative n together in polar form, we can take advantage of the enormous symmetry that trigonometric functions have. Um, sine and cosine are odd and even functions, respectively. So a lot of stuff is going to cancel out and simplify. Uh, let's watch how it happens. So here's cos. Cos is an even function. So uh, when you take a, a negative angle and put it in, you get the same as if you'd taken the equivalent positive angle. Um, and sine is the opposite. When you put in a negative angle, it flips the whole thing upside down. So that's why sine of negative n theta is equal to negative sine of n theta. Now, how does that work when I substitute that into the line above? Well, you can see what you're getting here is um, terms cancelling out, right? When you have a look at these sine theta terms, or I should say i sine n theta terms, they are going to cancel. I guess you would call that destructive interference. Um, and then these cosines here, um, they double up, so that would be constructive interference. And you can see that's how we end up with the result that is required of us in part A. So, z to the n plus z to the negative n gives us this 2 cos n theta term. How do I use that in part b? Well, you can see, even though they haven't say, said hence, um, this z to the n plus z to the negative n, it appears not once, not twice, but three times in part b. You can see here is z to the n plus z to the negative n. It's just that the particular value of n is 1. Um, you can see it happens again when you look over here. This is z to the n plus z to the negative n. It's just that n's 4. And here you've got n equals 2. So what I can do is I can quote um, this result from part A in my proof for part B. And so now that I have a rough trajectory in my head of where I want to go, I just need to think about, well, I need to prove that left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. Will I start with the left-hand side and move to the right? Or will I start from the right-hand side and move to the left? And it looks to me like the right-hand side is considerably more complicated and my brain is better at simplifying complicated things rather than doing that in reverse. So let's start with the right-hand side and see how far we can get. Right-hand side equals, I think they've got z to the 4 plus z to the negative 4 out the front, with which they've very helpfully um, put parentheses around to group to make it easier to use part A's result. Um, then you've got four lots of z squared plus z to the negative 2. And then what do we have hanging out on the end there? It's a plus 6. Okay, write that there. Lovely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quote that result from part a, I can say that z to the 4 plus z to the negative 4 is equal to this where n equals 4. So I'm going to say that's 2 cos 4 theta. 
Okay, I've substituted that correctly. There's not much to do. The n of four just goes in there. I then say this is four times, again, it's gonna be two cos, but this time the n value is different. It's two cos two theta. And then that six just tags along. So now what do I do here? Well, I'm gonna to need to use some trigonometric identities to simplify this out. Remember, um, I'm going to end up with something that looks like this, um, which also uses this result. So I need to simplify this mess of terms and get something much more succinct. So what I can see here with cos 4 theta and cos 2 theta is that both of these are um, double angles. In fact, one of them is a double, double angle, right? So what I can do is I can say um, cos of 2x, um, I can state that in terms of just um, single angles of x, right? I can say first, this is the one I always remember earliest, it's equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x, but looking at the result I'm trying to prove, there's no signs anywhere. So I don't think I'm gonna use that form. I'm gonna use the alternative, which is that I can replace that sine squared with one minus cos squared. So that gives me, um, watch out for that double negative, two cos squared x minus one. So I'm gonna quote this result. I'm gonna quote it um, a few times actually because I'll have to use it a couple of times. In the first instance, that two is hanging out the front. And then cos four theta, um, the, x that I need to choose to make this relevant is um, 2 theta. So cos 2 times 2 theta will be cos of 4 theta. So therefore, what I get here, it's going to be 2 cos squared 2 theta minus 1. Then what happens here? Well, um, the 4 times the 2, that just gives me 8. And then cos 2 theta, um, it's exactly the same as this, except I'm going to write theta instead of x. That's it. So I get uh, 2 cos squared theta minus 1. I add 6. Let's do some expanding and then you're going to see I'm going to have to do double angle formula again. So I've got um, 4 times cos squared 2 theta, but just to make things really clear, I'm going to write that as 4 and then you can see it's cos 2 theta being squared. That's what, that's what cos squared, cos squared, that's what it's shorthand for, right? I've also got 2 times negative 1, which is minus 2. Uh, what do I have in here? So 8 times 2 is 16. And then I also have minus eight plus six. So what I notice here is I've got a whole bunch of just constant terms here. Um, so I've got, uh, what do I have here? So four, um, the constant terms are all just gonna be equal to, um, let's do it over the end here, hopefully I'll have enough space. Uh, minus two, minus eight plus six, that's minus 10 plus six, that's minus four, there at the end. Um, and then here, um, I've got cos 2 theta squared. I've already done cos 2 theta, um, it just gives me this. So therefore, I'm just gonna grab this term here. Uh, that's cos 2 theta, and that has to be squared. Uh, plus 16 cos squared theta that nothing's happened to. So I definitely had enough space for that minus four over there. Okay, um, I now have to look at this and I'm going to square that out. So I get the four still hanging out the front there. Let's change to green just to clarify what I'm going with here. So two cos squared theta squared, that's gonna be four cos to the four theta. There's the first part. Then I'm gonna go minus four uh, cos squared theta because um, I take the product and then I double it. And then lastly, I have plus one, close bracket, everything has been squared. So now you can see all of these terms are hanging out the end here. It doesn't need to stay orange, so let's fix that up. And I'm pretty close now, right? I can um, get a lot of terms cancelling. You can see uh, at the front, I've got 16 cos to the power of four theta. Um, I've got four times negative four cos squared, so that gives me negative 16 or minus 16 cos squared theta. Um, and then four times one is four. Uh, these terms are still patiently hanging out here, but delightfully you can see I'm gonna get some more canceling, right? Um, you can see this uh, minus 16 cos squared and this plus 16 cos squared, they're gone. That's fantastic. And then you can see this plus four and this minus four, um, they're also gone, so they cancel. And now I'm very, very close to the end here, right? What, what is this? Well, if you have a look, um, again, you always should have one eye on the working that you're doing presently, and in a prove question, one eye on the result you're supposed to be proving. Um, you can see here, I was working with the right-hand side, and I want to prove it's equal to this. This is something raised to the power of four. So do I have the fourth power of something here? And the answer is yes, I do. 16 is the fourth power of two, and cos to the power of four theta is the fourth power of cos 
theta. So that's that raised to the power of 4. But again, from part A, um, this, this here is just um, this, but where n equals 1. So therefore, I can use this result up here. I just substitute n equals 1 here and n equals 1 here. So I'm going to do that. I get z to the power of 1 plus z to the power of negative 1 from part A. Um, so this looks really good, right? This is, oh sorry, I haven't quite finished. Um, all of that is raised to the power of 4, but that is, that's the left hand side. Pretty sure. Let's just go have a quick look. Z to the um, 1 plus z to the negative 1 plus 4, to the power of 4. I'm done. So this is the result I was trying to prove for part B. Um, I can therefore say as required. All right, so I'm feeling good. <laughs> I've got part B and part A um, in my pocket. Now I just have to finish out with part C. Show that. Cos to the power of 4 theta equals this. Hmm. How do I do this? Well, it's definitely a hence. So whatever I did in part B, I need to kind of use somewhat directly in part C, um, where it's going to have to come in some way. How do I do this? Well, when you have a close look at part C, and this is always the case with a proof question of any kind, right? I did it in part B just now. You want to see where in my previous working do I have something that looks the most similar um, to what I am trying to prove. Um, when I look through my working, where do I find cos to the power of 4 thetas? Where do I find cos 4 thetas and cos 2 thetas? Now, I already know it's meant to be somewhere in part B, and in fact, um, I can answer this in two ways. For starters, let's use some different colors. This is going to go pretty rainbow, right? You can see right here. Actually, I should use blue for that line. Let's do it this way. Right here. Wow, that is unexpectedly dark. Uh, that's better. All right, there is a cos to the power of 4 theta, right? And that's useful to me because um, there is a cos to the power of 4 theta on the left-hand side. So that's a, that's a start, right? What about this? Where is the last time I saw cos 4 thetas and cos 2 thetas mixed together in the same equation? And it looks to me like the most helpful spot is, let's go to my red here. It looks like it's up here. Now you see that? That's got cos 4 thetas and it's got cos 2 thetas as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two lines and remember they're in one continuous line of equal signs, right? So these two terms here, the, or two lines, the red and the blue ones, they're equal to each other. So for part C, I'm going to say directly from part B, um, I'm going to say on the left hand side, um, I've got 16 cos to the power of 4 theta. So um, you can see where I got that from. That was just right here, like so. Um, so I've got, I've got this result and uh, I'll just draw the arrow to be complete. And then I also want to have um, this result up the top here. So this is equal to, uh, let's go across back to red, 2 cos 4 theta plus, that looks like an 8 cos 2 theta plus 6, or not 16, it's just 6, right? So um, this is what I get from uh, this line over here. So let's also draw that dotted line just to make the connection very, very clear. So it goes all the way around here. Okay, great. Now you can see that from here, it doesn't take much effort to be able to prove this result. Let me just uh, copy it just so you can see it a little more easily, right? <laughs> I'm running out of space here. Let's uh, get myself a new page here. Okay, so this, remember, is what I'm trying to prove. So I've got this um, cos to the 4 theta, and then all these terms over here, everything's almost exactly lined up. All I need to do is divide both sides by this coefficient, which is 16. So let's go ahead and do that. If I divide both sides by 16, I get cos to the 4 theta on the left-hand side. Um, this is going to be, let's just do it longhand since this is a proof, 2 um, over 16. Um, this is going to be 8 over 16. And this is going to be 6 over 16. So it couldn't be more obvious that I've divided everything through by 16. But at this point here, you're pretty much home, right? Because have a look at the result that we're trying to prove. <clears throat> 2 over 16 is 1 over 8. That is exactly the coefficient that we wanted here. Cos 4 theta. Uh, 8 over 16, that's a half like I wanted. And then lastly, 6 over 16 is indeed 3 over 
eight. So even though it was the last part of this question, and sometimes final parts can be very intimidating and um, full of very long working, in this case, um, it was pretty simple. Part C was, it was barely two lines. We just had to identify the most appropriate spots in part B where we could use them as our launch pad for proving the desired result.